I want to get stronger. I'll give you the whole pitch, right? How do I do it? Well, you got to train the whole body at once. You could isolate, you could go into the gym, you could do bicep curls, you could lay down, just work the hamstrings. I'm going to make the argument that if you want to get stronger for your longevity, you're going to train your body just how you use it. How do you use your body? The whole thing. When I'm walking, I'm using all of these muscles. My muscles are moving my bones around. I'm not just, I guess I could do some kind of weird hop, right? Just use the right hamstring, but I'm using everything. When I pick things up, whole body. So what's the best way to teach or to train the whole body? Well, the barbell provides a way for you to uh, train the most muscle mass through the greatest range of motion and use the most weight, right? So I'm about to teach you the low bar squat. What is a high bar squat? High bar squats where I put the bar high on my back. What most people do just out of ignorance, not a bad thing. And therefore, when I go down to squat, what do I have to do? I have to not fall over. I now have a load on my back and I have to not fall over. So to not fall over in a high bar squat, I have to keep this really vertical back angle and try to stay like this. And everyone thinks that's good, right? I got to protect my back. I can't, I can't use my back. I got to keep it under me, right? I'm going to put today, say, hey, let's put the bar low on your back. Because if I put the, low on the uh, bar low on my back, I still have the physics problem where I can't fall over. So in order to keep the bar over the middle of my foot, my center of balance, I got to shove my butt back and lean over like this. Well, what did that do? Well, it shoved all this posterior chain, glutes, hamstrings, adductors, you know, quads, everything back behind me, and it loaded it. It also didn't load my knee as much, which as we get older, we want to avoid when we can. And it loaded more muscle mass. What's his goal? His goal is to get stronger. So if I want to get stronger, how do I get stronger? I lift more weight. So I want to pick ways that's the most efficient to lift more, more weight. So the low bar squat allows us to do that. So we'll start by showing you a body weight. Come forward a little bit. Right there is good. A little bit wider with your heels. Toes out. Good. Bring this one in just a hair. Good. So heels are underneath the shoulders. Toes are out about 30 degrees. Bring this one out just a hair. Good. And then put your hands together like you're going to pray. So squat down. Take your elbows and push your knees out with your elbows and just pause at the bottom. Very good. And you can look out of the ground a little bit and kind of pull your chest up a little bit. Yeah, there you go, good. So this is the bottom position of the squat. His hip crease, this part right here, is go down just a little bit. It's just beneath the tip of his patella, the top of his kneecap, and he's horizontal. He's leaned over, probably much more than if you've never squatted before have thought of. And this is because the bar is gonna go low on the back, and this is where it'll be over midfoot. Now, I put all this weight behind him, I wanna use it. We call that hip drive. So push this up and stand. Go ahead. Good. Exaggerated right now, which is exactly what you want. When you squat, I want to use the most muscle. I have more muscle back here than I do up here. So when I'm down in the bottom of the squat, what does everyone do? They get down. It's heavy. They want it to be over. They throw their neck up and they're like, ah, right? And the thing stops. And then you tell them, look down at the ground. Boom. They get their focus back. They go, oh, I'm supposed to push my feet down, drive my hips up. And the bar comes up. So everyone wants to look up when they squat, it's much better to look down to drive the hips. Okay, so go back down again, shove the knees out. Good, pull the chest up a little bit. There you go, but keep the eyes down. I'm gonna give them something to press against. Now push your hips up and stand. Very good, so doing that, you can stand all the way up. Yeah, doing that's gonna allow him to feel what that feels like. And what it feels like is I actually have to think about pushing the floor with my feet a little bit. Rather than just like opening the clam and bringing my torso up, I'm thinking about pushing my hips. Now at some point, he's gonna be here, right? and he has to finish. He's gonna bring the hips forward and stand upright, but out of the hole, he's gonna think all here, all right? So now we walk over to the bar. Not to insult anyone's intelligence, this is a, a power rack uh, of sorts. These things are called J-hooks. This is a barbell. Um, this rough stuff on the bar is called knurling. Uh, these are breaks in the knurling. They're just reference points. He's gonna take the bar, put it up on the rack. I've already predetermined his height, and if you look at where I put it, I put it right about his sternum level. Most people, when they're beginning, they put the bar up here at the throat because they think the bar is gonna sit here back high up on the traps. We don't want it over there on top of the neck. We want it down here on the back. So real quick, just so we're all on the same page, I'm gonna take your right hand and Ron can help us out. Pull over your left shoulder and just feel for that little bony ridge on the lateral edge right there. Feel that, yeah. Way outside, most of the time people are up in the trap. It's there, yep, so it's this thing out. Oh, relax this one, miss. That little bone right there, yeah. So the bar is going to sit just beneath that, which is lower than you would want to do automatically. For his grip, take a wide grip with your thumb on top. Good, a little bit wider actually, yeah. And then duck underneath and let's find that position. Good. So he goes underneath here. Now you can see he's been training for a while. He's got some muscle mass back here and it kind of makes like a shelf 
for the bar to sit on. His thoracic, his upper back, his scapulas are retracted, so pinch my fingers, make that real tight, good. And his wrists are neutral, so his, uh, his thumbs are over the bar and his wrists are neutral. We'll see if he keeps them that way. Go ahead and stand up, take a step back. Good, look down at your feet, same stance, looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing we did without the bar, except you're not gonna stop at the bottom. You're gonna go down and come right back up and then you have to shove your knees out with your brain because your elbows are busy. So take a big breath of air in and hold it. Sit back, lean over and squat and come up. Very good, you all saw the hips lead first. And right now, the hips come up, then the bar comes up, that's fine. That'll all fix itself when it's loaded. Do it again. Good, pause at the top, get a big breath. And now squat. Good, and two more. Good, make sure you stand up in between reps. When you breathe in, pull your pecs up a little bit. And one more. Okay, that's fine, walk forward. Notice when he walks forward, stay right there for a second, he hits the face of the J cup. So when you set yourself up, you don't wanna walk up and hit here, cause then it's gonna clank, clank, clank down, you're gonna get messed up, and you don't wanna have to tiptoe over this. So set it up so it's here, go ahead and go down. Cause when you finish squatting 315 or whatever the weight is, whatever's relatively heavy to you, the last thing you want to have to do is look around and aim for it. You want to just be able to walk right in and hit that. Okay, good. Very good. So one other thing we'll talk about as a group and then we'll break down is breathing. So everyone knows, you know, if you follow any fitness accounts on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, like that the guy dead lifting like this, right? Like he looks like a cat taking a dump is not good form, right? Or the guy squatting in his low backs moving around is not good form. So we wanna keep the back rigid when we squat. And the way we keep the back rigid is by using the abs. And it's a method we call the Valsalva maneuver. So I keep my back from moving around by contra a contraction of the abs. The way I like to teach it, I'll do it first. You can all giggle at me, and then I'll have you try it, is stopping an audible cough. So I'm in my squat stance. I breathe in as much air down in my diaphragm as I can. I go to exhale it forcefully, but I seal it off at the glottis right here at the top of the neck, right? So I go, and when I do that, my abs, all 14 of them, contract, right? And boom, and you feel that they're really hard. Now when I hold that as I go down and I go to come up, right, my, my back doesn't move. So everyone will get scared of you when you squat in a public gym because they'll see you looking down, they'll see you shoving your butt back there, you're gonna hurt your back. But they don't understand you're intentionally loading your back. You're trying to strengthen your back so you don't have pain when you do stuff. I'm intentionally loading it and if I do the breathing system right, my back, my whole uh, torso is gonna be rigid. It's gonna be a force, a rigid force transmitter. So go ahead, try the little <gasps> Yeah, and you can feel the abs get hard. And I, I make you do that because most of the time when I first started teaching this to people, they'd go like this. <gasps> I'm like, we're not going to the bottom of the pool, right? We're about to squat 300, you know, pay attention. Um, so that's the breathing technique you'll use. You'll also hold that breath the whole rep. So you'll come to the top <gasps> and you'll squat. Get back to the top. <sighs> and go to the next rep, okay? So each one is deliberate. Um, separate exercise from you know, training. What I mean by that is we have a deliberate plan every time we walk into the gym to squat a new weight. So when you exercise, it's like, hey, I'm trying to get hot and sweaty, burn calories, right? I might get a squat and do you know, 10 reps continuous like this, trying to get my heart rate up with this, especially when you're first starting, hey, you're gonna get under the bar, Alex, and you're gonna do five and you're gonna be deliberate about every rep. You're gonna be thinking about your form on every rep, right? <sighs> Boom, squat, come up, and into the next rep, all right?